Hello, my name is Narva Ryan. This video is a continuation of the three performance videos which I made a few weeks back and it's in a studio setting where I'll be showing off the hardware in terms of the actual sensors that I've been using on the instruments and the software that I've been using and how the sensors and the performer movement can affect the performative effects of visuals, um, sound layers and also lighting effects. So to go through all the hardware, I have three plastic boxes here containing the breadboard with all the wire connections and sensors connected to the sensors as well as the Teensy LCs and I have one for each instrument in my performance setup. So this one was for the piano, this one's for the cello and this one's for the violin. The violin and cello, they utilize the same three axis accelerometer sensor. So I'll just quickly cover those. Uh, with the violin I have here, the sensor and it's attached with all the wires into here and basically uh, the accelerometer attaches with the use of velcro onto this specialized clip which then goes onto the end of the violin bow and I already have that here attached with my cello system and that's how it looks right there and with my piano sensor I have here a digital tilt sensor which is attached to the underside of a pedal uh, usually the middle pedal of the piano and right here it's uh, I put it onto the underside of a eraser just for the sake of making it easier to put onto the bottom of the pedal so every time that I move this with the pedal there's a ball that clicks inside and connects the closes the current and so it passes a message of on into pure data which I'll be showing you very shortly and that means that it's an on message it's going to be a one so I can use that sensor value for something meaningful and every time it's open and that current is uh, not active then it becomes a zero and I also have here an ultrasonic sensor just weighted down with this bolt and th this is just a distance measuring module in which there are ultrasonic sound waves which come out of this side and hits the pianist hands and then it comes back into the receiving module and so it knows how far the pianist hands away relative to the ranges of the piano. So now bringing it into pure data, this is the custom patch which I've been using uh, for all three of the pieces and this is the module for the piano the violin and the cello accelerometer, all those different sensors up there. So I'll show you how it looks when I start moving the, the pedal tilt sensor. When I tilt this for the first time, there we go. It changes the sequence number here to one. And you could see up here in the column that we have those one zero to 127 values coming through. There it is again, and again, just like that. And here we have the ultrasonic sensor, so I'll show you how that works. You can simply just move your hand away and you can see that this top value increases and this is just a smoothed out version with this line command. So if I remove the bolt, I can show you a little bit clearer. It's a little rough but you see it's smoothed out with our bottom one much better. And you can use that information for really cool effects such as panning, sound panning. And now I'd like to show you the accelerometers on the cello and violin. So I already have the cello one on the violin bow. So if I move the bow already like this, you can see that these two sliders in the cello accelerometer little section here are already starting to move. And this one is gonna be pitch uh, control so it's going to be up and down just like this so if I move it all the way down you can see it goes up and like this it goes all the way down to the bottom and then this last column here this last slider is for the um, roll command so if I roll it to the side like this you can see that it goes all the way down uh, up to the top and if I roll it the other way then it goes all the way down to the bottom so that's also very useful information to have connected to different performative effects. 
Snap putting theory into practice, how does this cello sensor affect lighting controls? So if I open up this lighting effects sub patch in pure data, and I go to an effect like this, I can open up this spigot, and now we can receive sensor values to control lights. All right, so this is a good effect to show as, as an example. So we have here, Lighting effect, this is my original sensor value from one particular accelerometer value, and this is coded as meaning cello accelerometer Y. So that value is coming in here, and this is the original value. That's going to a particular light. I think it's DMX11 sub. And then I have that value inverted. So I do uh, multiply by negative 1, and then plus 127. That sensor is coming in here, and it's controlling another color. So... If I move the bow all the way down to the bottom, you can see that it becomes quite a nice blue. And then if we go all the way to the top, it becomes a purple. Yeah, it's a mix between blue and red. So that's how it looks, all with the control, and it's all purely reactive, so it's really nice and congruent, all the effects. So for the purposes of this video, I'm going to be showing you how the piano's ultrasonic sensor affects the sound panning. So I want you to keep an eye on this control right here. I'm going to press play on this particular sound file and keep an eye here what happens when I move my hand with the ultrasonic sensor. So as I bring it closer, you can see it moves to the left and as I move it further away, the sound pans over to the right side. Gonna move it back. So if a canister is playing in the higher regions, it's naturally gonna be up there more. If they move down to the bottom range, it's gonna be moving down to the left speaker. I'd like to show you how sensor values can also control visuals. And in this particular part of Solitude, I have this uh, clip of a very sort of serene nighttime um, scene with the sun going down. And so I would like to have a bit more of a subtle effect on this. And I have here in Touch Designer a lens distort effect, which is controlled by one of these particular uh, MIDI in values, which I have which is, it's actually connected to this sensor, and you can see that if we follow the trail, I believe it is this value right here. So this is the one we are looking for, and this is controlling the lens distort. So you can see that when I'm playing, and I want you to watch the corners of those clouds to see the effect really in as best as possible. So when it goes down, then it sort of zooms in and we get more immersed into the clouds. And then when I do it like this, it's a little bit more of a zoom out. You can see the clouds come in. So that's just one interesting effect. It's subtle, but it does add a little bit of life to the performance. Of course, you can attach that uh, type of sensor of value to something more like the color or the brightness of a particular um, visual. But this is just one option. Well, thank you for watching this video. I hope that there was something of interest in here for you. This whole project has been a huge learning experience for me across the year, and it hasn't been without its challenges, but I have learned a lot, and it's been really fun. Bye.